Every new version of C++ is exciting. Usually there are a few things inside that you all have been waiting for, but maybe you didn't even know. Today I'll show which C++23 feature made my thread pull nearly twice as fast. We'll have a look at some heavy C++ and how seemingly small changes can make a huge difference. First of all, let's have a look at the implementation of the old thread pool. The important thing here is the queue. The queue is basically what is connecting the threads which are doing the work and the user which is inputting the work. Here the queue consists on th of functions of the type void void. So basically a function which accepts a type void and which gives also back the void result. This means that during the creation of these tasks, we need to erase the type. So usually the user also wants to process something different than just the void void function. So he needs to get an opportunity to do that. This is done in the add task function. The add task function basically allows the user to input a different function with an arbitrary return type and arbitrary arguments. And later this is wrapped in some sort of a task which can be put to the pool. So let's have a look at how this exactly goes. The add task function has here uh, the function which goes inside and the arguments which go inside. Obviously we don't know what these are, so it's templated and uh, depending on what the user actually does, this function will be instantiated. Afterwards we use a task pointer and this is a little bit heavy. The task pointer has a package task inside and the package task is using this function with the arguments and it's then also obviously using the function and the arguments forwarded to this package task. The shared pointer is then created out of this package task and put inside the task pointer. To get rid of these types that the function have and put them into the queue, there's a separate wrapper function and the wrapper function takes a task pointer and it just calls the, 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 uh, wherever this pointer is pointing to and it just calls that function and this wrapper function is then put inside the queue. Let's have a look at the other side. The other side is basically the thread worker. And here, if we look at this queue, we see that uh, there is some magic uh, regarding which thread uh, can access which part of the queue, but that put aside, the main point is here. Um, as long as the queue is not empty, we take whatever is at front of the queue and we use that function um, we pull it out of the queue and we process that function and that's it. Let's have a look at how this thread pool performs. Every time you're talking about performance, the one thing that you should do is measure. You need to actually prove that your code, whatever you try to optimize, is actually running faster afterwards than it did before. So many people are not doing this and just claiming something. Um, obviously this benchmark here is also super flawed, so don't criticize for that but obviously in a real test case, just measure. The performance of the thread pool itself is basically measured here with an empty task. This might sound weird, but basically whatever is done inside the task that is put inside the thread pool, it will get a certain overhead by the thread pool. And this overhead is what we want to measure. And that is why we are putting an empty task inside of the thread pool and basically measure how long an empty task would take to uh, to get processed by the pool. In the benchmark here we're using a thousand different tasks and here I'm using catch2 as of testing framework which means that this benchmark here is not run a single time but it's run multiple times and then the values are somewhat average so you really get some good values out of that. And here we just see that uh, we have a thread pool consisting of four threads and we add this empty task a thousand times and then we wait until all of the results slowly trickle in and as soon as we have the results all processed, we quit. So let's run this and see how fast it goes. And here we see that the benchmark it is taking some time because we are repeating it quite some often and we see that here we have some mean value of around about three milliseconds for 1000 empty tasks. Obviously your mileage might vary if you're on a different machine, more powerful, other architecture might be stronger. 
But uh, since I'm running this on a virtual machine, um, I'm quite happy with the result. So let's have again a look at the at task function and see also where the problem here is. The problem, main problem here is that the package task already contains a shared state. So a shared state between the consumer and the producer. So somebody who is processing the task and somebody who is putting in the task and is interested of the result. This is something that we are wrapping additionally into this shared pointer. The shared pointer here is something that we have to do because of a really weird thing, which is that this wrapper function here needs to be copyable. And since it needs to be copyable, we need to put something inside that is also copyable, which is a shared pointer. A shared pointer is copyable, wrapper function is copyable, everything is all right, we can put it into queue. But because we are here basically wrapping a wrapper around the wrapper, the performance is probably as bad as it sounds. So we are creating a lot of overhead just to erase that type. In the perfect world, this would be much, much easier. So let's try to rewrite the code in a way that would make much more sense, is more readable and probably even faster. The first thing that we will do is getting rid of this shared pointer. So we delete the shared pointer stuff here and we give it then the name of task. And that's probably already it. We have now created here the task. And the task is something that we now put in directly inside the wrapper function. So we put the task here and now we use something that you can do in a Lambda. You can create a capture, which is actually moving the value. You have here to write move of the task. And this is now this task inside the Lambda is now moved inside the Lambda, which means that it doesn't create a copy. It doesn't create a reference, but it's really only available in the Lambda after that. Then we also replace here the task point uh, by using task. And since this is now being moved from, we use also here the standard move around the task. And that's basically already it. Something that we cannot do here anymore is getting the future of the task pointer. So we need to uh, get the future at the beginning. And this is because uh, the task has, after it has been put inside the Lambda, it has been moved from, which means that afterwards we cannot use it anymore. So we pull the future out before that, which is accessing this underlying shared state. And then we return that future from our function. The call side is pretty similar. The call side here, we also know that now we can move from this type. So we just, use also here a standard move around the result of the queue and that's basically already it now we should already be done so let's try to compile this and see what happens the first problem that we probably run into is exactly that the standard move of the task since the package task here is const we would be disqualifying it. So we would uh, use here basically a non-const type and discard the qualifiers, which means that we can pull a little trick here and use the mutable keyword, which can also be used for Lambda functions. So inside this Lambda function, we allow the, the treatment of the task as a non-const value. We can do that here because we know and this is the important part. We know that of this task, we only will use the processing side. So since we have already detached the future here, um, the only thing that we will do here is process this task and not uh, pulling the future again. So this is why we can do it here. And the mutable is OK in this area. Now let's recompile and see what happens uh, next. This one is a little bit more tricky. Here it complains that static assertion failed, standard function target must be copy constructible. Okay, this is one of these unique C++ error messages where you sit in front of the screen and you ask yourself, what is going on here? 
Now let's have a look at uh, the standard function because this is what is finally ending up in our queue. In our queue we have the standard function and the standard function void of the type void. So let's have here a look at standard function. Because standard function is copyable, the standard requires that callables used to construct it also be copyable. Which means that whatever we put inside a standard function to construct it, it has to be copyable. Now what are we doing in our code? In our code, we are putting something inside the queue, the queue contains, remember, the queue contains the standard function, which is actually moving from something. Because it's moving from something, it is not copy constructible. And because it's not copy constructible is uh, the reason why this compiler here fails and is, it is failing rightfully so. And this is where C++23 comes to the rescue. Because here uh, in C++23 there's a proposal for a function which is a move only function. Which means that you can put stuff inside which doesn't need to be copy constructible and the function itself is also not copy constructible because of that. So one thing that we need to change here in the code to make it work, we need to replace this here by the new proposal of the move only function. So let's do that. We replace this here by the move only function. And one thing that you probably also need to point out here is that you also need to use the C++23 um, standard of the compiler because otherwise uh, it will not know that this move only function exists. So let's head to the console and compile it and see what happens. So we see that the compilation already did work and it's now running the test case. And let's see how fast we get. Here we are below two milliseconds. If you remember at the beginning, we had something like three. So it's probably not twice as fast, but it's a good chunk faster, around 30 to 40%. And just by using this new C++ feature, move only function. This is something that I really like about C++. It's always evolving. With each standard that comes out, there are so many useful things inside and this standard move only function is just a tiny little bit of that. It's always getting better. I hope you learned something today about thread pools, about uh, some of the C++23 features, and I hope you also enjoyed the content. If you want an in-depth explanation of how the thread pool itself works and how I came up with this implementation, have a look at this video. And as always, enjoy coding.